Hey guys, and welcome to the first video in a multi-part series about minority representation in video games. Across the length of the series, I'm going to be covering multiple questions I had about the minority representation in video games today. Today, I'm going to be covering a few questions. Number one, is minority representations in video games important? And number two, does it add value to gameplay? Most arguments for inclusivity argue from the idea that fiction shapes reality. It's the idea that your worldview can be influenced by the stories told to you. Instead of art imitating life, life would imitate art. This is why I believe these arguments are fundamentally flawed. Adults of sound mind can tell the difference between fiction and reality. The argument that adults will change their views of the world by viewing harmful representations put forth in video games directly ignores, perhaps willingly, the ability of said adults to perceive the difference between reality and fiction. To reiterate, when you claim that viewing harmful material warps your worldview, you are asserting that the viewer cannot tell the difference between reality and fantasy. Despite this flaw, there are those that still believe minority representations are important. The two main arguments put forth for minority representations are as presented by Adrienne Shaw, quoting her directly, First, people want to see people like them. This is part of the market logic argument. If you want people to watch, play, read something, you put people like them in it. Second, it is important that people see people unlike them in order to garner a broader view of the world. This is the educational argument. End quote. These assertions assume two things. One, that people play games because of the identity of the main character. And two, that people play games in order to widen their scope of the world. Since I'm a gamer, I play games because they're fun or challenging or engaging, not to get an education or because the character on the front cover is a straight white male. These arguments are flawed because they are just assertions without any evidence to back them up. While talking with others about the issue for the better part of a year, I've identified several questions that can be used to reach a hopefully satisfying conclusion about the importance of minority representations in video games. So to answer the first question, is it important? My answer is maybe. As I continue the series, we'll look at other questions in an attempt to answer this question more decisively. Does it add value to gameplay? When talking about games, it is impossible to not talk about gameplay. The structure of rules and actions a player can take shape the experiences of the game world. Is it possible that minority representation can have an effect on game mechanics, and by extension gameplay? In short, the answer is yes, but only in a very specific genre and only in very specific games. With the exception of games that allow you to create your own character, or allow a choice of character from a pool of characters, there is no effect that difference of race, gender, or sexuality that can affect gameplay. Even in such games, the mechanics have to allow for differences of experience based on the race, gender, or sexuality of the player character. Surely in games like Fallout, where you can gain abilities that allow you to influence others through dialogue options, these differences can play a significant role in gameplay. In games where you can choose your character from a pool of possible characters, these differences can offer access to different mechanics, such as bonding with an NPC of the same race or charming someone of the same sexuality. The problem with gameplay effects like this is that they are limited to RPGs or games with RPG elements. So in the case of these games, representations may be important to gameplay if said representations offer different abilities to the player, either through concrete, demonstrable mechanics or subjective roleplay experiences. In these cases, it's important to note that a player looking for a plethora of options in their video game may be drawn to these types of games. This, of course, would be because of the gameplay roleplay opportunities and not because of identification with a minority character. As such, minority representations in RPG games are important because they can offer a greater depth of player choice and immersion. But what about non-RPGs? Can an action shooter like Halo or Call of Duty offer different gameplay based on the character's identity? Again, the answer in short is not really. These type of games typically feature multiplayer competition as one of the main attractions for players. In order for a multiplayer competitive game to be good, there has to be a sense of balance between players. Equipment may change, but ultimately the better players should be able to come out on top. As far as the game mechanics are concerned, in a balanced game, differing identities should have no effect. Race and sexuality have no bearing on the mechanics of the game. Even in the case of gender, there is very little effect. This is because of a section of the game rules called hitboxes. Hitboxes, quite simply, are the boxes of space surrounding your character that the game will register a hit. When gender is an option presented to the player, only the appearance of the character is changed, not the hitbox. Therefore, female characters with smaller skeletal structures 
are treated exactly like the male characters as far as the game is concerned. In this sense, from a gameplay stance, the gender, race, or sexuality of a player character has no effect on gameplay, and as such, could be interchangeable. It is important to note that this interchangeability has no effect on gameplay alone. In games where there is a set narrative, the identity may not affect gameplay, but it can drastically change the narrative. Next, I'll be exploring the identity effects on narratives, and whether or not changes to the character identities are important to the story. Subscribe for more and check me out on Twitter at Floop Network. Thanks for watching.